Hello, welcome to this another episode of this podcast. We're going to talk about some good case study scenarios to uh, help investors to make the best informed decisions based on this very challenging economic times. Welcome again. My name is Si Wing Yi from the Yi Realistic Network and my friend and partner, uh, Mr. Richard at Vanny, an investment loan agent. So uh, thank you for coming on board, Richard. I know you're a very, very busy person. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me share my screen and talk about this case scenario. And so we're talking out there to visiting investors. So here's the thing. There's two scenarios, Richard, I want to paint with you since you since your strategies, your loan guidelines and underwritings are so critical to invest, real estate investors to achieve and leverage their real estate wealth. So given the interest rate environment and what have you, I just created a pro forma on this Cape Coral, Florida property. This is a, in real time. This is the numbers that I have received from my uh, network provider, Mr. Justin Zawatney from Cape Coral, Florida. And this is a single family home. Uh, for 385000 it rents for $2,500, and, uh, and at 25% down payment, uh, as you can see, maybe you cannot see if the, the, the words are kind of uh, small, but uh, at 25% down payment, normally you tell me, I don't know what is the investment uh, interest rate for, uh, you know, interest rate for investors. I, 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 I calculated at 5% because uh, I want to run the scenario with you. If an investor would buy down their rates, uh, I want you to talk about that uh, for, for a few minutes. If an investor would buy down their rates, they would get 5% uh, interest rate on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. And when it's all said and done, $2,500 uh, rolls rent minus all the debt obligations, taxes, insurance, property management fee, and, uh, and the mortgage, we still have a net monthly cash flow of approximately. $187. Now, another scenario, uh, Richard, I want you to go over. You and I talked about this before, prior. Uh, the, there are some new investment loan products out there in the, in the past few months. And this is uh, interest only, 10 year interest only. Uh, uh, the first 10 years, you do not pay principal. Uh, and uh, this product has been getting very popular among real estate investors because they want more cash flow, they want lower mortgage payment so they can achieve more cash flow. So I want you to go over this unique uh, low product, uh, this 10 year interest only and the interest rate and all those qualifications. So two loan scenario, I want you to discuss. And once you explain it, Richard, I want you to explain it in a way to, uh, to stick to this case study, to stick to this particular uh, 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 house, um, number of uh, pro forma. So without further ado, go ahead and uh, go over your two scenario. Yeah, thanks, Yi Wing. Um, so yeah, first thing to note, uh, of course, is with the last rally we just had, unfortunately, the rate on this pro forma is probably a little under where market is. I would plan for, you know, with buy down, getting into the mid to high five. So that would affect these numbers a little bit, but that actually is a good segue because um, that non-traditional program you're talking about, which has an interest only, is a really, really unique product, but also something that as investors, we're in dire need of with uh, where interest rates and property values are. Uh, as we're all aware, it takes typically a little while for rent inflation to catch up with uh, a property value rally or an increase in cost of ownership, you know, i.e. higher rates. Uh, most leases obviously are written in one year increments or two year increments. So, you know, a lot of those are still to come due, which probably will push up um, the rates a little from, from where they are. Um, so this interest only program we have, another great thing is it is a fixed rate. So it's a 40 year fixed. Uh, the first 10 years are interest only, and then the remaining 30 years are fully amortized. Um, what's beauty of, uh, beautiful about it, once again, is you, know, you still have that fixed rate, uh, which is a good hedge against inflation, but you have that lower monthly payment. Uh, on average versus a conventional 30-year fixed, uh, your savings, in, in terms of your cash on cash return, 
it adds about 1.75 to 1.8 percent increase in your cash on cash return and then um, of course you do have the ability to still send in more principal you want or to take advantage of the lower payment for those first 10 years uh, while rent increase and inflation you know takes its play um, but yeah it's a very unique program um, and it would you know keep the cash flow numbers obviously a little higher on this example uh, another thing too i'm sure a lot of uh, us as investors are seeing is a lot more of these pro formas actually include return on amortization as well as potential other benefits that come with uh, property ownership. That way, of course, we as investors can look at the broad picture of what this investment is going to mean for us versus, you know, obviously just chasing a cash flow number. All right. So, okay, uh, getting back to the uh, 40 year uh, loan program, my again, my pro forma here shows at 5% interest rate. So this 40 year, 10 year uh, uh, non-qualified program, uh, if in terms of, uh, I know is, you know, when people evaluate uh, the performance, the projection is more than cash flow, but it's much more than that. Uh, we don't have time to talk about the other aspects of, a, uh, of the benefits of real investing, but let's stick to the cash flow for right now. Now, now this number at 5%, at 25% down payment on this property, uh, you have a, net cash flow monthly of uh, around $187. Uh, you know, what, so how much higher would your cash flow approximately you know, one can uh, obtain by using this, this non-qualified loan program you just, you, just, you just talked about, you think? Yeah, uh, generally in a situation already like this, you're looking at a little over probably $100 uh, a month, which adds up to about that 1.75% ROI. If we take this example in particular at a $385,000 purchase price, um, a principal and excuse me, an interest only payment on this. Now, keep in mind, once again, the, you know, the rate, I think at 5% is definitely under market. You're looking closer to the mid to high fives. Um, but looking at these non-traditional loans, which are closer to the high sixes, um, an interest only payment on that would be um, about $1,620 versus the 17, almost 40 you have listed there. But once again, that 1740 is going to be a little higher based on where the current rates are. So, you know, you're looking in this example, probably $140 a month spread in um, monthly payment, maybe a little more. So it would be uh, instead of uh, approximately 187 in, on, on this example would be like uh, into closer to 320 to 330. Yeah. Okay, that, that looks good. That uh, and the uh, you said this this initial interest rate on this ten year interest only uh, loan product is uh, in in the high six, right? Correct. Yeah, and it's not an initial interest rate. That rate's fixed for the duration for yeah. forty years. And and the reason why this loan product give you higher cash flow because you're not uh, I think uh, a person is not paying the principal. That's is. It's all interest only, at least in the first 10 years. That's why the cash, uh, because the, the payment is, uh, is lower than the, uh, a traditional 30 year fixed rate product. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. And so tell me some pros and cons. Uh, so a, 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 a newbie investor are thinking, oh, uh, this kind of uh, alternative loan product is risky. Look at the 2008 crash, a lot of those subprime mortgages. Uh, you know, went belly up because of this type of uh, exotic loan products. How are you going to overcome and address this perception that this uh, loan product is a uh, is a higher risk than than normal? How how are you going to inform and educate investors to to address this this perhaps a very misconception I belief? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, there's nothing higher risk about the loan, right? And that's as I mentioned when we started one of the things I like about it the best is the fact that it's a fixed rate for the duration, right? It's not an adjustable rate. It's not a balloon, um, which those are risky loan products because you don't know what the rate's going to adjust to. And, you know, what if you can't refinance it or, you know, a lot of the non-traditional loans out there would have a balloon. So your payments nice and low for 10 years, but guess what? After 10 years, you have to pay off the whole loan or refinance it. So, you know, this doesn't have any of those those parameters. You know, it's a fixed rate for the duration once again. So you know exactly what the payment is for the first 10 years, 
and you also know exactly what the payment is for the remaining 30 years after that. So it's it's a beautiful product. They still do have balloon products and um, adjustable rate products available in the market. And, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of those, which is the reason why we don't offer them. And uh, this product itself, once again, is, is, you know, there's nothing risky about it to you as a consumer. There is a prepayment penalty on it generally for the first four years. That means if you pay it off within four years, you need to pay, um, in this example, maybe about $8,000 uh, worth of prepayment penalty. If you pay it off after four years, though, there's no penalty. So that's the only, I guess, outside of the box feature of of the loan, but everything else, as I said, is a fixed rate for the duration. So there should be uh, no fear of, of unnecessary risk with this product. What if, a quick question, and, 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 uh, what if is the interest rate uh, in the next year or two years uh, is, uh, is lower to like, let's say for the sake of discussion, is lower to like 4.5% uh, or 4% uh, on this particular product, can an investor refinance uh, out of this loan product in, uh, for low uh, for lower interest rate. Yeah, absolutely. But they would have to pay that prepayment penalty that we mentioned. So uh, at the very at the very least, uh, try not to refinance if at all possible within the first four years. After four year uh, expiration period, then they may refinance for a lower rate if there's a lower rate down the road. Right? Yeah, I mean not necessarily. I wouldn't say don't refinance within four years. Just weigh out the pros and cons. Right, factor in that prepayment penalty factor in the closing cost of the new loans as well as your savings and then you know we can make a determination of the best path forward yeah so as you and i briefly spoke last week uh, you mentioned uh based on uh, uh based on uh, uh what you've been doing on your business uh, you told me that 50 percent of the investment loans you've been doing recently uh, are consists of this particular product. I mean, uh, so investors are really open up to this uh, non-qualified uh, loan, am I, am I correct? Yes, you're correct. I mean, it's a combination of things. This non-traditional product's also available to people with over 10 finance properties. And as we've seen, you know, newer investors kind of get a little scared off um, by the higher rates and the reduced cash flows. We're seeing a lot more of our seasoned investors kind of double down and continue buying, which is why those, um, you know, non-traditional products are, are actually up in percentage versus the, the conventional loan products. Yeah, I would agree, Richard, uh, with you uh, on my database, I still have quite a few newbie investors uh, that are trying to pull the trigger and they are, you know, being paralyzed by all the negative headlines and uh, we have to do some, you and I have to do some extra education on this particular loan product in order to ensure that the uh, newbie investors feel comfortable that this, this alternative loan product is very good uh, for investors under the current economic and real estate environment. Now, getting back to, as we conclude this particular podcast, let's go over this uh, performer again. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's take a step back and look at uh, two scenarios. If an investor going to buy this particular property as a case study, 385K at 25% down payment, and the out of pocket is 100 grand out of pocket on a 30 year fixed rate. What is a 30 year fixed rate for investment loan traditional fixed rate that we've been talking about uh, uh, prior? Uh, so, what a, briefly, what is the uh, interest rate on that right now? Are you talking about today? Probably in the high five. So, I mean, let's estimate 5.875 versus the 5% that's on there. Right, okay, so today's investment rate on someone with good credit, 25% down payment in the high fives. So under this scenario, under the high five, uh, we, can, we can estimate that the monthly net cash flow is instead of 187, could be a mere $100, a positive net cash flow on this traditional 30 year fixed rate investment loan at high fives for investors, right? Uh, around $100 monthly net cash flow. And then on this, uh, the loan product that we've been discussing, the 10 years interest only at high sixes, uh, because the investor is not paying the principal, at least in the first 10 years, the cash flow is higher to the tune of around $300 monthly net cash flow on this 40 year loan product. Uh, am I right? 
Uh, not entirely. So, um, and of course I have the, the calcula calculator and calculations here in front of me. So I know you were kind of shooting in the dark. So the cash flow in the ex example we just ran with the 30 year fixed amortizer would be closer to $50 a month. And with the non-traditional loan that would add about $130 a month. So that'd take the cash flow to $180 a month from $50 a month. Very good. And very, very important topic we need to conclude. <laughs> now, you're thinking uh, <clears throat> whether someone is a, a, a experienced investor or a newbie investor, you're thinking, oh, what should I put? Uh, why should I risk 100 grand of down payment to only get $50 a month of cash flow on a traditional 30 year fixed rate product or, or uh, 100 some $200 monthly net cash flow on this uh, 10 year interest rate loan product? Uh, why should I, you know, why should I proceed with this investment? Now, you and I know it's not all about cash flow. You know, as an investor, you buy for the long term. There are other ways you can make money. I mean, you can, uh, as you know, appreciation potential, the, uh, uh, your, the, the rental income will increase at the rate of inflation or higher on an annual basis. So you have more cash flow down the road. Then you have uh, tax benefits. Uh, on, on and then you have uh, the the renter gonna systematically amortize and pay down your loan because you're getting an amazing thirty year fixed rate mortgage whatever and then uh, uh, and then equity appreciation five to seven percent appreciation over time so there are five six different ways to make money not only about the cash flow so so your message yeah I know you can you, you and I can agree on this you know. You know, under the current economic environment and interest rate environment, I know cash flow is not as high as we would like, but it doesn't mean that we should not buy investment property. Even the performance that you and I went over, you know, we went over various examples. Uh, you can make, we can make an argument that, you know, if, since this market is a good market in, in Kikoa, Florida, and, you know, low inventory, still high demand and, a lot of growth is going on, population, job growth, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, so I know you're gonna say yes, you, you know, under all these unique factors we see in today's environment, you and I would agree that we should still buy this property uh, in, in, in light of this low, low cash flow. So what is your justification to, uh, to motivate and, and uh, inspire investors to buy this type of investment product. Yeah, I mean, I agree with every point you said, but you know, I, I think in general, just as your points, which are very valid, are people are still focusing on um, analyzing the real estate for the actual cash flow, and and I think uh, a, a broader way to look at it, and the way myself as a lot of investors are looking at it, is where is a safer place to put your money right now? Right. Um, you know, okay, the cash flow is obviously not as high as all of us would like, although for the long term, right, long term real estate is a wealth builder. And even setting appreciation aside, right, um, you know, you're buying it with leverage as well, which is a huge hedge against inflation. Um, and regardless of interest rates and stuff, there still is a physical housing shortage. Forget about people buying homes and, and inventory, just cut all that out, right? bodies and roofs over bodies there's a housing shortage right so rents in my mind are and if you look up any of the economic reports rents are going to stay steady if not still go up uh, moving into the future short-term future here right so in the long term you know once again where else are you going to put your money are you going to put it in the stock market that's extremely extremely volatile a lot of people have pulled gains out of the stock market now and are putting them into real estate um, are you going to keep it in your checking or savings account Sure, go ahead. You know, your 100 grand just turned 80 grand in the last 12 months. And uh, if you had 500 grand in there, well, sorry to tell you, but you lost $100,000. Um, whereas in real estate, you wouldn't. So, you know, look, we want the investment itself to, to make sense and pencil out and not be a loser, um, you know, for sake of protecting our money. Um, but, you know, if you look at it in terms of a safe haven, Right. And traditionally, people will put their money in a savings account because it's safe, although, you know, you're getting paid a fraction of a percent. And, you know, 
Inflation historically is two to two and a half percent. So if you're getting 1% in a CD, you're losing one and a half percent a year. Okay, it's a safe spot, but you're losing money. Today with inflation and double digit percent, if you put your money in a savings account paying you 1%, you're losing a lot of money. Um, you know, you're going to put it in crypto. Crypto's nuts right now, right? So where are you going to put your money is the big thing to me. And most of us as investors are looking at real estate because we have a chunk of capital to invest. So your options are sit on that capital, lose 15 to 20% a year for God knows how long with where inflation is. Um, invest in the stock market, which if you have already followed this logic, then you're probably licking your wounds a little. Invest in crypto, you're licking your wounds a little. So it, it kind of takes me back to where else long-term are you going to put your money? Now, if you if you have 300 grand to invest and you know you think you're going to need 100 grand of it in a year, okay, don't invest all 300 grand. But if you know that 200 grand is a long-term investment and your plan is to play it safe and sit on it, um, you know, you're losing money and you're not participating, obviously, in the growth the market has to offer. So I, I take it as, you know, I'd say, you know, performance used to be 95% in cash flow of what we were, the, the rationale of why we we're buying as investors needs to be 10% now. And you need to get away from the specifics of the real estate investment, get more broad level. I have this cash, where am I going to put it? And what's my plan with it? Because no plan is losing money. And I think what you'll come down to is even for a 0% ROI, that the safest place to put your money right now is going to be real estate, is going to be something tangible. Um, yeah, kind of long-winded answer, but. Very good answer, Richard, as always. Uh, it's a very, very nice recap. It's a tremendous you're a tremendous resource. Uh, this is a great information. So investors out there, you really need to uh, just digest what we just talked about and uh, really uh, uh, and take action. That's the key to uh, achieving financial freedom, regardless of what's going on out there. A lot of things we cannot control. So control your own unique financial destiny, focus on your action plan. Uh, invest for the long term and just just avoid all the negativity out there. So thank you so much. Great analysis, Richard Avani from Supreme Lending. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, great presentation.